Six Pack Lapidat, accompanied with Joe Whiteley. We have the men's juniors, as well as highlights for sub juniors, some equipped. Um, just off the top, unlike some preview shows where we do a division by division, full analysis of all the different lifters, and then give our picks for gold, silver, bronze. This one, it's going to be highlights. So we're going to go into a division and highlight for you a key lifter we think you should be watching or some key battles. Basically, we're giving you storylines as opposed to, you know, top five, six lifters, giving their background, telling you what their trainings look like, giving you our picks, etc. This is going to be going into the storylines for each of these so that if you're watching, you understand what the key storylines are and moving along from there. Um, and off the top, like the last episode, Joe, you just wanted to give a quick shout out for anyone who doesn't know. Joe is a part of open powerlifting as well as obviously does commentating for worlds, commentating at Sheffield, um, IPF media page, writing for bar bend, uh, freaking, you know, a lifter herself at world championships, uh, you know, done tons of different hats. But uh, you wanted to talk about open war open powerlifting for a second. Yeah, we've got some um stories up at the minute. We'll try and make that into a highlight so we don't use them. Um it's worth just going to the open powerlifting Instagram and just reading what's going on. Basically, what we're saying is we can't do it. We are months away from complete failure. We don't have enough people doing the work. We um we can't we can no longer deal with people sending us a, a 36 page PDF of uh, results that could have just been sent to a spreadsheet. Um, what we really need from the community now is pressure to be put on the federations to work with us because it comes as a surprise to a lot of people that the federations aren't actually in touch with us. There's quite often, with some exceptions, but quite often we have no contact with the federation at all. And the only reason those feds results go up is because a lifter in that federation does the work themselves. Um, you don't have to have an official position in the Federation. You don't have to have their permission. Um, but we really need help. And I think it's important. Last time I came on the, on the podcast and talked about open powerlifting, we had a lot of volunteers. None of them stuck or hardly any of them stuck because it was just too hard. The process was too difficult. You had to download a bunch of software that you didn't understand. And it was just too hard. We have a better process now. If you've tried to help us before and you it, it was just too difficult, come and try again because we have a better process now. You can do it all within a browser. You don't have to download any software. Hopefully it's easier and more basic. And we really need people now to be interacting with the project themselves, uploading meets themselves and doing some of the work because we cannot do it. We always hoped, we always thought that someone would naturally come forward from each federation and do that federation's results. And it just has not been the case. We have no volunteers from, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, federations like um, WRPF um, and RPS and SPF and WABDL and UPA and APA. Huge numbers of federations in America that we send in results most weekends and we have never had a volunteer from those federations so it's it also it's also a problem when federations are relying on us and when lifters tell us all the time that i can't get into this competition unless my results run open powerlifting or i can't get my record unless the results run open powerlifting and that's a really unfair pressure to put on the project from the federation they should really be keeping their own records and it's not the lifter's fault the lifter just wants you know their record or their entry um but we do not have the resources. We do not have the manpower to do the work. So we need pressure on the federations to work with us, pressure on meat directors to send us results in spreadsheets instead of encasing them in a PDF or in some cases actually taking a photograph of a screen that's got the spreadsheet on it and sending us that, which is absolutely no use to us. Um, we just need you to help us out now. We've, we've accepted even handwritten results in the past pdfs and jpegs we can't do it anymore um results that have come out of open lifter or lifting cast are brilliant we can upload those directly and we just need all the results to come to us in a, a more reasonable format now we don't have the capacity to spend two hours on picking a huge document to try and get the data out of it we have to have 
people from the federation helping us uh federations working with us meet directors just just send us the results if you're using open lift or lifting cast there is an export for open power lifting button right there hit that email us the csv and you know you your your meet will go up um so yeah that's it really go to go to the open power instagram page have a look at those stories and if you can help us please please do there it is um and we'll move into the junior men starting as we do with the smallest weight class again we're just going to give the highlights in the 53s and yes there's 53s and juniors not in the open but in the junior and sub juniors so there's an extra weight class at the bottom not a lot of major storylines. And again, we're focusing on storylines here. So I'll just give you off the nominations. The host nation, Romania, with the number one nominated lifter, Andre Georgescu with a 460. Looks comfortably ahead from Team France. Killian Vallette and then Kuwait in the bronze medal position. Fahad. Now, you say he looks comfortably ahead, which he does, but he's also lifting equipped earlier in the week. Mm. He's uh, last year's equipped world champion. So... I doubt whenever he put that nomination up, he lifted equipped four days previously. So you might see him underperform as a result. Perhaps the door of opportunity swings open for Team France and Killian. Uh, Good note there. And that's something that a classic guy like myself would have slipped under the radar with some of these equipped lifters. And I think it's far more common. Um, I mean, obviously the classic and equipped in the open is separated in terms of the world championships, but in the juniors, it happens in the same meet. And you might think, well, you'll pick and choose which one you lifted. No, no, we've seen quite a few people actually decide, you know what? I'm doing both. Thank you very much. Let's see what happens. And it's, I always have great respect for people that do both like Tony Cliff. He does both and he does well in both because it's such a different training style. It's such a different lift. If I'm benching equipped, my raw bench goes to shit every time because uh, maybe I'm just not good enough to maintain a raw line and equipped line. I don't know, but I wouldn't be able to lift equipped and then lift raw a few days later. I would be all over the place. So we do have a storyline in the 53s. In the 59s, definitely have a storyline. It's Ivan Campano from Spain. Number one nomination, but it's not just the impact at this junior worlds and the possibility of him collecting a junior world title. There's a bigger picture here. Wasker Carpio from the U S at the world championships, obviously taking the gold medal and I've had him on the podcast and we need the 59s to have some competitiveness, to have some rivalries, hopefully from two different nations and they clash at the world championships. And Ivan's name has been brought up. Now, if you're looking at Ivan, he totaled at the Open World Championships in Malta 602.5, clearing into the 600 kilo club, which is good for the 59s. Now, you might be telling yourself, wow, it's a fair bit behind Wasker, about 25 kilos. But don't fret. That's a 25 kilo jump from Ivan's 2022 total. And if you're paying attention to Wasker, he also, once he joined the 600 kilo club, threw on 25 kilos in less than a year. It doesn't mean Ivan necessarily is going to be making, you know, another 25 kilos quickly in less than a year, but he has made a 25 kilo jump on his total in some from last year to this year It is a potential pacing that he has. And he's joined the 600 kilo club and looking at his training. Now this is not all in one day. But training total on different days, he's hit 620 relatively smoothly, clean lifts. He has some good top end strength. He's a young guy, a junior, and has potential to grow. How quickly can he catch up to Wasker? Can he make this a battle? Can we have an exciting 59 kilo class between these gentlemen? Are people going to start emerging? This is really a storyline here for the 59s because Ivan, if we're looking at the nominations, uh, you know, we're talking about 30 kilos ahead uh, from the the number two nominated. He's a pretty solid pick here in the 59s. But if there's a bigger picture, just how far can Ivan push it? He's not just competing against the other juniors coming to this competition, but he's trying to make a statement. Let's see if he can do that. In the 59s as well, uh, Bodhi Lacoe 
with a 260 kilo deadlift nomination. Um, Lorenz from the Philippines. I mean, there's some good lifters here that we want to pay attention to. And let's move into the, but the storyline is definitely Ivan as we're looking at storylines. Yeah. 66 kilo class. Got some more storylines for you as Kyle Nowak from USA. A nominated 662.5 kilos. And if you're wondering just where we're looking at, in terms of the bigger picture, I saw Kyle following his Instagram at 149 pounds body weight, deadlift 700 pounds. Now, when we're talking junior 66s, 145 pound man deadlifting 700 pounds, that's 318 kilos. That is a monster pull for a junior 66. Kyle is pacing very nicely. His nominated 66 kilo pull is 302.5. So obviously this is in the gym. He hasn't traveled to the other side of the world um, in terms of possible having to weight cut while travel, dealing with time zone change, maxing out on squat, maxing out on bench. But the top end strength is there. Yeah, that's a if, huge deadlift. The world record is sitting at 287 and a half. If he can pull it off, no pun intended, at the world championships, yeah. it's there for the taking for Kyle. And in terms of historical relevance, so he's nominated at 662.5. We think this total is going to jump up based off of what we're seeing in his training. The world record junior total is 688 kilos held by none other than Charles Opoko, who later became a two-time open world champion and all-time great in this weight class. I'm not necessarily saying Kyle is going to threaten 688 world junior record by Charles Opoko, but it is a good measuring stick just how close the 688 can he get in terms of a measuring stick in where Kyle might be pacing. Kyle looks like he's a special talent at the junior world championships is where he'll have the opportunity to prove it. And that is for myself, the major storyline going to the junior worlds for the 66s. Now I'd be remiss if I didn't also say the Canadian um, trend has been tagging King of the lifts. And I talking about I've nominated eighth, wait until you see what I'm going to do. And Promising a major surprise for everybody. When you're nominated eighth, usually you're not making this much noise. My man hit 650 in the gym. Now that's in the gym. 650 is a monster total. That would put him nominated two just behind Kyle. And it would but appear it, as though from that, I mean, they'd be rivals. But I don't know what to make of it, Joe. I, I mean, what happens in the gym? How much body weight? It's, are you cutting true. travel? But... Those nominations are really close. He's nominated at 595. The guy had 595.7. The guy had 597, 600. They're close nominations. If he puts on 15 kilos, as you say, he's on the podium on nominations. Right. Um, and yeah, it's Sato from Japan, 642.5. There's a big spread drop from Kyle to Sato. We're talking 20 kilos. And then from Sato down to Ho from Singapore. And it, with a 611, a pretty, like, I mean, we're talking 30 kilo drop there. Yeah. So there's a spread in in between everybody. It's just in terms of these I, nominations, if someone I like think Trans third Canada. Place is up for grabs, though. I really do. I think third well, I mean, place if, could go one of like six ways. If Trent really hit 650 in the gym to comp standard style, we're talking not battling for bronze. We're talking threatening silver. We're talking if Kyle has a bad day, God knows, a massive upset. And the way he's been tagging King of Lifts on all of his posts and offering King of Lifts collabs for his posts, we're never going to hear the end of it if he pulls off a major upset in terms of the Junior World 66s. Okay. So for myself, for sure, sticking with Kyle being the major storyline that I want to highlight, but just giving you, if Trent pulls us off from Canada, oh my goodness. Um, yeah, we're going to hear about it. It'd be a major up from eighth. To first would be crazy. From eighth even to podium is a great storyline, if we're, if we're being honest. And as so we, we take a look at the 74s? Yeah, yeah, let's take a look at them. I don't know if you have much on, um, is it Kian Tarada uh, from Canada? 
I haven't seen him lift internationally before. Um, he's done a few competitions in CPU, but I he does I don't not really have much. any information. I, yeah. I looked on, so for these lifters, I'm looking on TikTok and Instagram, and he doesn't post a heck of a lot. Um, number one nomination, 725.5, and done in Canada. It's legit. It's an official total. I mean, all not all nominations are should be taken equally in terms of credibility. We've touched on that before, depending on the nation that I put it forth. But this is legit. This 725.5 yeah. is legit. Um, and but it's a very contentious, not to step on your toes here, Joe. I know you want to give some no, notes no. on the 74s, but it's a contentious lead over 724 for Alberto um her eyes from Spain who was the previous junior world champion in the 66s just a kilo and a half ahead of Alberto and Alberto eating into the 74s moving up from the 66s he's accustomed to the world standard at the junior world championships he won the 66s in 2021 he's in the 2022 world championships i seen him squat a smooth 265 um, I've seen him pull a smooth 275 and I've seen him double on bench 160. He's nominated with a 271 squat, a 165 bench and a 288. So the lifts he's hitting are smooth in the gym. Not sure what that indicates in terms of possible PRs. It's not like he's taking his old PRs and doubling them. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. It's, it it's depends, I think it's it? a very tight battle. Some people do always want to do the lifting training before they do it on the platform, but some lifters like Brittany Schlater, she never gets close in training to the lift she does right. on the platform. So you can't always tell that even if they are posting to Instagram or so. Um, and then we've got a really tight pack of nominations. Uh, Joey Fernandez, he uh, didn't do too well. It's Aaron Joy, isn't it? Um, I think he bombed on squat last year, if I'm right. Thomas Boyer from France and Dario Milica from Italy, they are all nominated within one kilo of each other. So if all goes to plan for one and two, we're going to have a real scrap there for third place. I'll give Aaron Joy this. Um, if he's had a somewhat sketchy in terms of the squats, he has broken the deadlift world record and has a monster deadlift. And in terms of the battle for bronze, he'll have the last say. If he can get him pieced together his subtotal, not miss lifts, and get himself in that position, he's got a monster deadlift. Amongst those that are actually vying for that bronze medal, he's got a sizable edge on that deadlift. I mean, a sizable edge. We're looking at, you know, over 20 kilos in terms of the deadlift power. So he's got to just go six for six on the, on the subtotal and he should be able to dictate it, it'll be tough because they're going to push him. You know, that battle for bronze is going to be, it's going to be tight. Really the storylines for the 74s, the battle for the gold between team Spain and team Canada looks very close. Um, and I'm not sure entirely what to anticipate from Keen because he doesn't post a lot. And Alberto has been posting and his lifts look smooth. But they look on pace to what we've already seen. Very difficult to tell, though. You know, very difficult to tell how some people step up from there. Can we each give a quick shout out to Bobby Tan from Singapore, who is nominated with a 183 bench in the 74 kilo class, in the junior 74 kilo class. That is a phenomenal bench press. A little way off the world record, but um, yeah, I expect him to come in for gold on bench. And moving into the 83s, Joe. Uh, we have yeah, Andrea Orlandi from Italy, um, and Thomas Chaplicki from France. Now, I haven't seen anything of him. He came to the UK Arnold, um, that we had last September and lifted in the classic powerlifting there. Um, but I haven't seen him since. So, um, we also have uh, Suleiman Turkey who. Uh, has been around for a, a while now. They're all clustered quite tightly um, around. We've got Orlandi on 765, Chaplicki on 761. I've got to be honest, I don't really know how their training's going, uh, but I will give a quick shout out to Joey Awala from Great Britain, whose training has been going phenomenally. 
recently. It, it, he posts more uh, pictures of him posing than he does lifting these days, it seems. So. Okay. But he, uh, all I've seen, really seen from him recently, he doubled 315 pretty easily a few weeks ago. Um, and I know he's uh, got a big deadlift and he's trying to brew that up. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't have any of the notes really on the H3s. In terms of the 83s last year, obviously, it, it was a highly hyped battle. We had Sean Jin, Nick Manders. I mean, 83s last year were absolutely stacked. And, and they progressed into the open and, and have been contenders in the open pretty much immediately, as well as Eduardo Mezzucelli, obviously, from Italy as well. So the number one nomination this year. And Ed, Ezucelli, uh, Mezzucelli, sorry, previously had won the Junior World Championships as an 83. Italy represented once more in the 83s with Orlandi being the number one nomination and not far behind of Thomas from France, just four kilos off the mark. It looks like that's the battle to be had. Um, I'm not sure how it's going to end up. None of these gentlemen are are major in terms of how much posting they're doing. Um, as I look at Mezzucelli, I, I see his previous total that he's put up with 765. He's got highlights there, but beyond that, most of it's pretty old. I mean, you're dating back to March. I see a bench press of 205, but that was before his previous competition already gone up. So in terms of the scouting, to your point, what do you take as a data point? It's not really It's really difficult. You. Like you said, like you said this, this class cleared out last year. All the top uh, lifters from this class that were at Wills last year are not in class this year. So we don't have familiar faces uh, in the podium places. Well, We've seen all these lifters before, but uh, they haven't been fighting at the, the top before. That's right. Well, and that's this is the opportunity. When the old guard moves on into the open and the old, old guard has done well in the open, now it's an opportunity for the new guard to establish themselves. So we'll see. We'll see what Orlandi ends up doing. Um, 765 for a junior 83. It's a great total. Let's see if he can improve upon that. He throws 10, 15 kilos, and he's in the late 800s. By the time he hits the open, he could be a contender as well. It's getting to the point now where it's an 83, 800 kilos is really that mark you need to be to be taken seriously. Um, a lot of people are hitting that 800 kilo mark now. So, And he's not too far off in terms of his progress. We'll see what he does come the Junior World Championships. In the 93s, Joe, we got some the return of the dragon. Yeah, Yu Lung Li won last year. He's looking in great shape. I I have to say he's looking like the favorite. He has got some stiff competition, but he is looking like the favorite coming into this one. Got a fantastic deadlift, but so have all the rest. We've got Shane Nutt in, nominated in second place. Yu Lung Li is nominated on 831. And we have Shane not coming in at 818. So that's just one mistake away, right? That's uh, one missed lift away. Uh, he right. finished, he just missed the podium last year, uh, put in a great performance, but didn't really, didn't quite make it uh, onto the podium. Um, and we have Nathan Gaval. Now, I, I kind of get the feeling that his training has been going very well, but he doesn't post anything. He keeps it all under his hat. Uh, this is his last year in the juniors. I know he wants to go out with a bang. I know he, he, you know, you can sort of sense the confidence in someone when things are going well and they think they're going to do well. And I kind of feel like he's going to bring a big performance, but I don't have any data to back that up. Just a kind well, of sense of how he's doing. It, it, so looking at Shane Nutt, um, I mean, the last time he posted a deadlift was a month away. So it's kind of difficult to tell. It, a lot of these guys are playing their cards close to their chest. The last yeah. month is where you're going to hit, be, be hitting all your top singles. You're trying to do some scouting on these gentlemen, and it gets difficult when, when they stop posting about a month out. Um, looking at some of his captions here, he did hit a squat. He said, based off the RP of this single, I'm pretty sure I'm closing in on 700 pounds at Worlds, and maybe I'll bench over 400. I don't know exactly, and this is what Shane's saying. Take that with a grain of salt. This is how he's feeling. Looking at his nominations here in terms of his 180 previous, 
benching over 400 uh, and that's eight 180 kilos of 396 pounds that sounds about legit to me and i don't think he's leading anybody astray squatting closer to seven with a 305 nominated total what does that convert to um i think that's 672 if i'm not mistaken let me do my quick math here 305 yeah 672 if he's getting a little closer so he's saying anyways that he feels like he's a lot closer or that he's making a lot of progress on his squat now has he made enough progress to catch up to you long yet to be seen and nathan oh. whom also was not posting a lot is eating up into the 93s mm. and so in this total that he's posting up here uh 815 let me just pull so where where did he hit that at because if it's a uh, a, I think that a was new a change, isn't it? Yeah, he did 8.15 as juniors in April. Okay. And this was his 93 kilo debut? Yes, because yes, it was. When, right. So when these people start moving into the weight class, what they did initially and then what can they can do as they continue to grow into the weight class, it's difficult to really put a, to put a measuring on it. Like Agnes Rudin on the previous show, moving up from 69 kilos, she moved into 76 it was immediate gains, but for some people, they move slowly into the weight class um, and the strength comes on a little bit slower. So it's diff Nathan's a bit of a question mark. I think he is, but we've got Shane Nutt on 818 and Nathan on 815. And I I really feel like Nathan's going to be a long way ahead of that. Uh, it's just, I just don't have any data to back that up, really. Um, he, he was in really good shape, went nine for nine at the juniors. That was all the way back in mm -hmm. April. I imagine he's going to do a fair bit more at this one. I think he's going to be challenging for it. Uh, Yulong has to be the favourite, right? But um, I think Nathan is going to be uh, up there pushing him. And in nominations yeah. as well, we've got Malik um, Triolet from France, only two kilos behind Nathan. Uh, he's and a phenomenal lifter. Yeah, Malik, born in 2004. What can you say about this kid? He was the youngest man ever to total 800 kilos. Um, it, for sure, it'll be tough for him to catch up to some of these older fellas in terms of podiuming. But if we're talking about storylines here, and like we said off the hop, we're talking about storylines. You want to pay attention to Malik, what he's going to do, even if he ends up off podium. The youngest man to total 800 kilos, he's born in 2004. He's four years younger than the other gentlemen that we said were vying for podium finish. He's the future. He's the guy you want to pay attention to. How close can he get? right now in 2023 and it'll somewhat foreshadow a pacing what he could be because he's pacing well and also i just wanted to say in terms of the nominations um if you are taking a look at the scouting with shane nutt if you were to add on the kilos that he's claiming he feels like he can add on he'll be i mean if we're talking 10 kilos onto his squat and that's kind of what he's hinting at and maybe a few kilos onto his, his bench press, and that's what he's hinting at. Shane is already right there with Yulong. Proof is in the pudding. I get it. Yulong and isn't standing still, though, is he? He's not standing still either. No. So take it all with a great salt. We're, we're, some of these gentlemen are not posting video, and, and they're making bold claims, and, and it all depends on what happens on the day of. Uh, but they're, And their but deadlift what, also is relatively close. Well, yeah, I was going to point that out. We've gone in for a really good deadlift battle here because we have nominations of 330.5, 333, 335 for the top three. And Peyton Johnson, the American nominated in fifth, has a nominated deadlift of 342 and a half. So we're in for a great deadlift battle, if nothing else. Yeah. yeah look at that. We good. have a chap from Singapore nominated with 350. Alexander Wairu Ang. Um, nominated with a 350 deadlift. I'm not familiar with him, actually. Have you seen him before? I have not. Um, not in terms since of... Calgary. He was lifted in Calgary as a sub-junior. We've not seen him since then. In terms of the deadlifts, while I agree you long has been a little playing his, clo his cards close to his chest in terms of revealing, like most of his squats have been rep work and not singles as of late. 
he did in late July post a 330 deadlift in, in he's nominated with 330.5 and you're right. He's probably not standing still, but the 330 looked laborious to my eye. That was a month ago though. Here's the problem. These gentlemen, again, I don't know. Was it a tough day? Things changed in the last month. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have all the details. These, these gentlemen are posting a lot, but I'm not sure. We'll see how it all shakes up. But if you're doing social media for scouting, that's really all we have, as well as past numbers. It looks like Shane might be pulling after him. And if Shane can add those kilos that he's thinking on his squat and his bench press, and Shane pulls after him, I don't know. Again, we're not giving picks necessarily, but I'm Shane might don't be more. Count out Nathan. Yeah, yeah, and of course Nathan's eating his way into the ninety three. Yeah. So there's so many variables here, uh, but Shane could definitely threaten the defending world champion Yu Long, and Nathan, of course, from Great Britain, moving up from the eighty threes has the opportunity to eat into this weight class and is going to continue to grow. And his first total at ninety three, he's probably going to do much more each and every time as he gets bigger and more acclimatized to the 93s because he's getting bigger into the weight class. So you're right. You're right. There's We got some movement here. We got some I think movement. that's going to be an exciting class. It is. It's definitely one of the most competitive, as well as, again, the storyline with Malik from France. Wherever he ends up, um, you got to pay attention to him. Looking at, uh, shall we move into the 105s? Sure. And I'll tell you right now, the main storyline with the 105s is Anthony McNaughton from the U.S., Anthony, a bronze medalist last year, had a battle with Coco. Coco ended up taking the world title, um, 895. And Anthony disappointed, but it's actually Anthony between Coco and him who ended up crossing over into the 900s. And that's right, 900. So his nominated 875, don't believe it. Anthony has done 900 kilos previously. Uh, his training's looking phenomenal. He looks on pace. I seen him do his nominated deadlift is 327.5. I see him do 320 for paused reps set of four. So he is definitely on pace. If you're wondering, is he on pace for that 875 or is he on pace? Probably a little more closer to that 900 that he's previously done. No, it's the 900. He's back. As long as the wheels don't fall off. He should be closer to that 900 or even push deeper into the 900s. When we're talking about the 105s, we're really talking about Anthony McNaughton. And if Anthony McNaughton could push his total deep enough into the 900s, he becomes competitive even into the open when he ends up moving into there. So I'm interested in seeing what he does. Born in 2000, this will be his final junior year. So it really is the open that his destiny is. He would love to leave the juniors with a world title as well as a total that puts him almost instantly competitive with them. Already haven't entered into the 900s. He's almost there. If he goes into the open at the world championships, they got to take him seriously. But if he could add 10, 15 kilos onto that total... Now he could threaten to a possible podium situation. It all depends who comes over from the USAPL and who ends up in the 105s, but not to get ahead of ourselves to next year's Open World Championships. But if you're asking me, six, what's the storylines of the 105s as I watch the juniors? It's really Anthony McNaughton. He appears to be far and away ahead. There's not a major battle here, but there is. Do we have a star in the making? Well, if not a star, a potential contender for the podium next year. And uh, and the answer is yes. Anthony might be able to do it. Let's see what he does. This will be a good gauge of his pacing at the Junior World Championships. I think it's so uh, worth taking note of Rennie Keiki. Um, that's probably not how you say his name. So apologies for that. Because he has done 891. Um, but it was a little while ago, and I think he's... I don't know whether he suffered an injury on squat or what happened, but his squat dropped from 317 in 2021 to 280 in 2023. And that's a, that really impacted his total. That 840 is from Malta, where he didn't have a great day. I think he only got one squat in. He has done 891, so I'd keep an eye out for him. 
I think he's rebuilding his squad. Um, I don't think it's back to where it was yet, but it could be on its way. Could be here. So I'm looking at his most recent, uh, just a day ago, actually. What total is this? If you pull up his Instagram and he hadn't been posting, he'd been somewhat under the wraps with posting leading into Malta anyways. Now Malta ended up being, like you said, a regression and he probably didn't have a whole heck of a lot that he wanted to show, but it looks like to me as we take a peek here, hold on a second. Guess the final squat. Do you see the same post that I'm on? Yeah, I do. I do. And your uh you cued me up perfectly in terms of talking about his squat. Um moved up to 280, handling it relatively smoothly, and 300 kilos at the end. And what's your impression there? I don't know if you're watching it real time with me, but yeah, no, I'm watching it with you. Yeah. It yeah, looks it was, so uh, comfortable. Right. It, it it looked it was work. It mm -hmm. does it look like to you the I think he might go up three hundred kilos from his multi performance, but I don't know if I anticipate three seventeen point five from no. Europeans in twenty twenty one when he hit eight ninety one. It's uh, I don't know. Well, what are you thinking? It's it's difficult to well, say. I, I, I don't know what the story is. I don't know what happened to his squat, so it's hard to say whether he can get it back or not. Presumably some kind of injury that's yeah, impacted his deadlift a little bit as well. So he could well be just on his way back up, ramping back up to his best numbers. In terms of um, what he's revealing and posting and whatnot, that was, that was the main post in between worlds in this one, he hasn't been posting a whole heck of a lot. So mm. that's what you got. It's a relatively, it's a workman like 300 kilo squat. If the squat returns to 317.5, we're cooking, but it's, it's kind of difficult to say at this point. And his bench yeah. also has dropped significantly, by the way, from 233.5 to 210 in Malta. That 233.5 was done at Europeans once again at 2021. And, and it dropped, you know, for a, a bench press to drop. So there's a story there. 3.5 kilos. There's a, a big gap in his competition history and uh, a big drop in, in numbers. So there's a story there and I just don't know what it is. Right. And he's not posting a heck of a lot. So it's it's difficult to say if he's regrouped or not. I am glad he, he posted that last squat and we got a vision of 300 kilos is definitely there. I'm not sure he's back to 2021 levels, but he's probably up from Malta. Let's put it that way. I still don't think he's with Anthony, though. I think the because even in 2021, Anthony has done more and it doesn't look like from what I've seen, he's back to 2021 levels. So yeah. I do still feel firm with Anthony. But there's a, there's some questions around Renee. And if he could, if he, he needs to turn back the clock and then add on top of that. We'll see. How about the one twenties, Joe? I um, really don't have a lot on this. Um, I'm not familiar with most lifters. I don't think we've seen Jonah Weindeck before from Germany. He's nominated with eight seventy six, and then we have Said Al Hassi from Libya with eight seventy. Now he he competed last year. He did seven eighty two last year, so he's made a lot of progress in in short order to be nominated there with eight seventy. Massive 350 kilo deadlift. And Taras Melnichuk. Now, we saw him compete in Malta. He competed in the Open at Malta. I seem to remember that he had some trouble with his squats. Um, I think he maybe only got one squat in. He didn't have the performance he was looking for that day anyway. Um, so he's nominated at 860.5, 860 just ahead of Canada's Jeremy Valorand on 860. Um, so it looks like we've got two ahead, uh, two relatively new lifters. They're new to the international stage anyway, who are looking like one and two. And then a little gap back to Taras Melnichuk and Jeremy Valorant. I don't know if you know Jeremy, one of your compatriots. I don't know him personally. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I don't have a lot to say on that. I haven't really found any training of any of them. I don't know how any of them are doing. Um, and most of them are new lifters to me. 
Yeah, I know Jeremy, this will be his first time in an international scene. So okay. but that's not in entirely, you know, different from a lot of these lifters when they come to the world championships in the junior levels. But it can be an issue if if you're not used to that, the harsh uh, judging. It was as we see, even veterans get get bit by that one sometimes. Mm-hmm. Is there uh is it look like Jonah from Germany is Probably the the gold medal favorite. You thinking? I I think it's uh, on nominations anyway. I think it's close because Said Al Hassi he's nominated six kilos back, but he's got the bigger deadlift, which always gives the advantage. Um, Jonah's got a big bench, which has contributed to his total, and that can be a little bit fragile at international competition as well. So I would say it's closer than than it would appear. I would say those two are neck and neck. Gotcha. And um, would you like to move into the 120s? Sure. Uh, 120 uh, plus. The 120 plus, is sorry. And uh, I'll take this one with Timur, who's really the heavy favorite. Now, Timur has hit 10, 11 kilos at the European Championships. And if you're looking at the 2022 and 2023 totals, he has now moved just 2022 and 2023 totals. He has now moved past Ray Williams to the number two spot at super heavyweight within the IPF and is number three. If you want to include the USAPL and Frank Allen in terms of totals. So Jesus Oliveris, obviously the number one super heavyweight in the IPF. Now Timur has quietly, and I say quietly Timur does not post a lot on social media, um, he's from Georgia, does not get a lot of social media attention, but has moved past Ray, William, Ray Williams as the number two and is number three if you want to include the USAPL as well. But a note I would give you, Frank Allen is 33, Timur is 21. In terms of his overall potential, sky is the limit for this kid, already at 10, 11. Now, he was in Malta, He has previously hit a 403.5 kilo, 890 pounds squat. He's chasing a 400 kilo deadlift. So in Malta, in terms of attempt selection, his previous PR being 403.5, he jumped to 405 immediately on his second attempt. And that would have been a PR in his second. Now, he doesn't post his training Don't know how good his training was going in Malta, but that's a bit of a gutsy move. In the junior worlds, he has a spread over the rest of the pack. He is the one to watch. So there's no one really threatening him to make him take smaller jumps. He might possibly be taking big jumps like this. If he stays in the pocket and he starts hitting his lifts, I'm interested in seeing how far he can push his total. At 21 years old, he has a potential to. I can't remember how, what why he failed his uh, squats in um, in Malta. Was it depth or did he not stand it up? I, I can't, can't remember just now. remember. No. Yeah, you'd have to double check on that. But his, I think that's key to whether it, it was a strength issue or a technical issue. But he um, missed four or yeah, five twice. Yeah, he, he had two kicks at it and missed it twice though. So whatever the issue is, it wasn't there on the day when you have two attempts yeah. at it. Now he's hit 403.5, which isn't far off that mark. And also he's hit 385.5, 850 pounds on the deadlift. He's got the world record in the juniors, but he was chasing that 400 kilo mark and he wanted to enter the 400 kilo club and missed that as well. Can he stay in the pocket and build a total? Or is he going to be shooting for the moon, start missing some lifts or... Are his strength levels at the case now where these aren't shooting for the moon? These are absolutely within his wheelhouse. And he can start hitting these big squats and these big deadlifts. Looking at the rankings, we could really use a super heavyweight to start applying some pressure on Jesus Oliveris. Ray Williams, if you were paying attention to the NAPF championships, uh, missed his third squat and really has, it it doesn't look like he's going to continue to progress or roll back the clock at this point. Still a solid competitor, obviously. He's total over a thousand kilos and is a great super heavyweight and you know one of the greatest of all time, period. But in terms of a contender, 
who can apply pressure to Jesus Oliveras. This would be the storyline for the Junior World Championships. He's No one's anticipating he's going to put up a total that's going to do that now. Jesus Oliveras is still Jesus Oliveras. However, how much can he grow upon his total? How many kilos can he put on that 10, 11? And can he start going, you know, eight for nine or possibly even nine for nine? Because that's how he's going to build this total. Yeah, I expect that squad to just keep growing. I think that nomination had a missed bench at two thirds as well. So he, he left some kilos behind on bench and some kilos behind on deadlift as well. He's left kilos behind. And okay. and that's that's kind of been the story here. And if he could pick these kilos up and toss them onto his total, he's going to need to. He's going to need to because he's got a lot of ground to cover, at least to apply a little bit of pressure on Jesus Oliveras, at least to make it so that if Jesus has a bad day, he's got to think about something. Otherwise, we're just signing up for the Jesus Oliveras show. And look at Jesus lifted on a great at show. Sheffield. I was about to say, he lifted unopposed at Sheffield and put on, you know, he stole the show, yeah. right? When you're that strong, you know, you're just, you're, you're, you're battling history, aren't you? But again, a reminder, Timor is only 21 years old. So we'd be remiss if we, if we count him out and don't really look at his full potential because he might make some big gains. We'll see. We'll see what ends up happening. And I also have, just like in the women's, some statistics I'd like to roll out for you. So okay. in the women's side, the Team Italy and Team France racking up a lot of top-end nominations. Team USA behind those two. On the men's side, in, term of no in terms of nominations, USA has four lifters nominated in the top three, five lifters nominated in the top five, and two lifters nominated number one. Team France, because we were talking about France and Italy in the women's division, that looked so strong on the nominations. Team France, three lifters nominated in the top three, six lifters nominated in the top five. And all of those lifters, by the way, are 93 kilos and under. So they're smaller end men, but zero lifters nominated first. Still a solid team. They're going to collect a lot of points. Don't have any number one nominations. Again, these are nominations. How the actual game plays out, We'll see. People will shift from three to two to two one, et cetera. And Italy, which was looking so dominant in the women's with so many, with five lifters in the top three and eight lifters in the top five, which is extremely strong women's team. On the men's side, Italy has one lifter nominated in top three, three lifters nominated in top five, and one lifter nominated first. A little bit of a different story here. For, for Team Italy. So take what you will of that. Obviously, the recap show will be able to tell you how all the teams ended up and um, some things do get shifted around. Can we have a quick look at the sub-juniors? We should. Did you want to go first? I have a couple of notes here. Um, I think you had the same note on Nonso Chinye. He, um, he's nominated him first in the 120s. He's been, he has the junior world record in the 105s at 330. And he's moved up to the 120s and the world record in this is 320. So I think he's gone up a weight class. I think he's going to have a crack at the world record in this weight class as well. And um, he's, he's, I think he's done really well to come in so high up in the weight class above. Nominated at 778.5. 711 is the next nomination behind him. I think he's going to put on a show. Um, yeah, like to that point, I've been following his training. He did 800 kilos in the gym and he could have doubled it. Like he, his nomination, throw it out the window. That's not his. <laughs> he, I'm telling you, 800 kilos he did in the gym and it was legitimately could have doubled it. And that's not an exaggeration. So his strength levels at this point, sky high. I remember meeting him in Turkey and he had that monster deadlift that put everybody on notice. But since then, in just a year, he looks like a different human with the amount of muscle he's put on. He had just started powerlifting and he has dove into it. Oh, like at his age, he's still a sub junior. The amount of muscle mass and mature muscle and, and just development you're going to do regardless, let alone when you dive into powerlifting like this. He's a massive kid too. 
You meet him in real life. He's got a lot of body to fill out because he's very tall. I think he's like 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, very tall lad. He's filling out. I don't know what he's going to put up because based off that 800, and that's the only SPD day I've seen, it's going to be huge. It's going to be a lot okay. more than anything he's previously done. Um, and yeah, for sure, records could fall. I also I'm have also, a note. Sorry, you go, go ahead, Doug. No. So, uh, I was just going to mention uh, Joshua Nagoka. Um, he's yeah. nominated in 120 plus. He's a long way ahead. But I'd just like to point out that he's done two competitions up to this point. He did a qualifier. He did the British Juniors. And he very nearly took a clean sweep of Ray Bowring's sub-junior records, which is quite an achievement. Um, and he's put up, put up 781 at his second competition. And he's coming into this nominated like 170 kilos ahead. So I didn't see him lift at the juniors. So I don't know what his lifts are like. I don't know how consistent he is as a fairly new lifter. But that's some phenomenal numbers to bring into pretty much your um, first year of powerlifting. Another highlight to look out for in the sub juniors 105, Hamza Demir from Austria, 17 years old. And in training, he put up a clean 840. And his, he squatted 305, benched 205. And that 205 bench, he put a super long pause just to show the control of command he had. Dad lifted 330 kilos and it was fast, easy with plenty of room. So he put up an 840 kilo total in the gym in prep for this. And none of them were towing that line again. Just like uh, Nenzo from Great Britain, in terms of the SPD day he had, these gentlemen, despite being sub juniors, you know, sometimes you end up grind, grinding, flying real close to the sun. Neither one of, one of them doing that. In 840, at 17, I mean, that's a 105 you got to pay attention to. He's a sub-junior still. Absolutely. You know, you think about what he might put up. Now the proof is in the pudding, and let's see what he ends up putting out there. But it was a clean 840, and I'm very excited to see what Hamza does. Um, this is as a sub-junior. I want to see what he does in the juniors. My goodness, this kid's going to be competitive in the open, if he, you know, suited up, I mean, an eight forties are very clean and and competitive uh, for the sub from sub junior to junior, and pretty soon he'll be competitive in the open. So these are some sub juniors you definitely want to keep an eye on. Um, is there anything in the equip side that you've seen that we should keep an eye on? Uh, uh, there's a lot of newcomers actually. Uh, we have Andre Georgescu in the 53s. He's lifting twice. He was last year's world champion. He's unopposed in that class. Um, Adar Shatavar, he was last year's winner as well. He's going to be a runaway in the 59s. Of course, it's not as clear cut and equipped. Anyone can bomb on any lift at any moment in the equipped. You know, it's a, it's a tricky discipline, but it looks like he's running for his second world title now. Uh, Radosław Dubicki in Poland. He was last year's winner, but he's got an, a newcomer, an Indian lifter, 30 kilos ahead of him in the 66s. So always interesting to see um, the Indian lifters come over because we have no background on them. We don't know what their training history is uh, because we don't have their results in open powerlifting yet. Um, just... Yeah, we have an interesting situation here in the 93s. So Ludwig Mohn from Norway, he's moved up from the 83s. So we've got the same situation again, where the uh, world champion is uh, battling world champion. Andre Sip from Czechia won the 93s last year, but Ludwig Mohn's gone up. So we're going to have world champion versus world champion. They're quite closely matched, so that should be a good battle too. Um, and then Knutai Nascar, he's probably one of the best lifters we've got competing uh, in the men's equipped this time. He's a long way ahead of anyone around him. Probable contender for best lifter as well. He's a great equipped lifter. He's nominated there with a 372 and a half kilo squat in the 105s. Um, and then in the 120s, we have a Chinese Taipei lifter that I have no info on at all. He's nominated a thousand kilo total which is quite a way ahead of uh, Mark Dolzhenko from Ukraine. So it'll be interesting to see how that pans out. 
and then Moritz Tashner. Um, the 120 plus, last year you'll remember Ray Bowring and Zen McCullum in the equipped. Um, neither of those two are lifting this time. I know that Zen's made the open team, so he'll be lifting in Lithuania later this year. So that's left the field wide open in the supers there. And I think we'll see Moritz Tashner. Um, he's nominated 200 kilos ahead, so he's going to have had a bad day if he doesn't take the win there. Perfect. Okay, well, thank you for covering that. And that should just about do it for the men's category, as per usual. Please do subscribe or whatever platform you're on. Um, give us high ratings and post up in your stories. Tag us. We will repost. Much appreciated. Until next time, six-pack lap it at six up, and we are out.